oddity here. In recent years, the lodging real estate investment trusts have been hammered. Now, a lot of this is just, a, I think, a little faux worry. It's a flood of competition from outfits like Airbnb, Verbo. Remember we had them on? But how can we tell when these stocks have been punished too much? Take Hersha Hospitality Trust. Now, this is a small cap real estate investment trust. Owns 48 mid to high end hotels, mostly in major metropolitan areas across along the uh, coast. Think Boston, Philadelphia, Florida, California. Over the past five years, Hersha's stock price has been cut in half. And this reported a challenging quarter last week. But when you drill down, there is a new wrinkle here. In 2017, some of the company's key Miami properties got hit by Hurricane Irma. Now, though, Hearst is ready to put those hotels back into service right in time for the Super Bowl, where you can't get a hotel room. I can tell you that already in the beginning of February. If you believe they can make the numbers, well, this stock's got an 8% yield. I think it's big. I like it which is why I want to take a closer look with Jay Shaw. He's the CEO of Hershey Hospitality Trust. Learn more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Shaw, welcome back to Man Money. Good to see you. Good to see Thank you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, so sometimes I say to people, look, um, 8% is a red flag, but your group has been under tremendous pressure. You've got no, uh, no problem with cash flow, and you also have this upside from Miami. So why don't you tell people, because it's been a while since you've been on, why this is attractive at this level? Yeah, I think, you know, you hit on some of the high points before. We've had, you know, in addition to being disrupted at two of our big hotels in Miami that, you know, together comprise close to 10 percent of our EBITDA. We had those offline for a whole year and uh, they're back online. But after you close a hotel for a year, it takes a year to two years to ramp up. I think the South Florida dynamic with the convention center being yeah. open again, the Super Bowl coming next year, Miami is expected to be the top growth market of the top 25 MSAs. And so that gives us a lot of optimism on, on really filling that hole, which okay. we've been living with for about a year and a half now. And, uh, and secondly, you know, what we're also noticing is that it's a bit of a risk-off environment right now with right. hotel stocks. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of driven by some of the uncertainty. But I, but I think what's being overlooked in our stock is across the last two to three years, we've We've done two very strategic, two very strategic initiatives. I think that was driven by the fact that we saw Revpar decelerating mm -hmm. a little bit because of uncertainty. So we, uh, in starting in six, uh, 17 and 18, we have recycled close to just under a billion dollars in capital. We sold uh, hotels that we felt were mature and weren't going mm -hmm. to be producing at more than market level growth, monetized the value on those, and bought. Uh, newer assets, more strategic, pure play to our strategy with much higher EBITDA growth profile. Okay, so what people need to know, I, mean, I'm, I always stay, I don't mean to be, I, I happen to love the Rittenhouse. And that's right. why I always stay when I go to see, I see you at the Eagles games. Right. It's just, it's the best hotel in Philadelphia. I don't think there's much doubt about that. But you also have a cluster strategy that I like. Uh, and that seems to, I think, immunize you in a lot of ways to where the economy might be. Yeah, I think... You know, it does help us a lot because, you know, when you with the, the, the cluster strategy combined with the fact that we're very market focused, but somewhat agnostic to segments. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you mentioned the Rittenhouse leading hotel in Philadelphia and, uh, you know, very productive investment, a great hotel. But we also own the Westin right. and we own the Hampton Inn at the convention center. And so the cluster strategy creates some synergies for us. Uh, with SGNA and overheads, it allows us to share consumer insights. Sales and distribution mm -hmm. strategies are positively impacted. But it also, having multiple segments in the same market, uh, you know, different segments peak and mature at different times in the cycle. So it allows for uh, it allows for us to have growth throughout the entire cycle rather than it being peaky. Okay, now there is a, not enough people cover you, and I've known your company for years. There is an outfit, uh, BMO, uh, that has you rated as an underperform, and their, their headline is Sour Big Apple, that they that you do have 24% you know, of your business is in New York, right. and that New York is weak. Now, I, I get the varying reports about New York being weak, and I also feel, to me, that Airbnb may have peaked. Yeah. Uh, or they would have come public, frankly. Yeah. Is, is Airbnb, did it erode a lot of the business here and is, is it coming back? Yeah, I think, you know, Airbnb has definitely had an impact. I, you know, it, 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 we have to be honest with ourselves. And what, it, what it's really, where we feel the most impact from Airbnb is on compression nights. That's when, you know, the cities used to compress out in the inventory and that allowed, with dynamic pricing, to drive stronger ADRs. And Airbnb, by creating a lot of shadow inventory, diluted some of that. And compression nights have been down. 
That being said, you know, we're seeing with Airbnb as cities are starting to enact le legislation. Right. To, you know, so that they're not illegally sidestepping mm -hmm. hotel regs and renting rooms as illegal hotels. You know, you're seeing a real drop up. Sa Santa Monica and San Francisco, after legislation was enacted, close to six months after, you saw a 50% drop in listings. And so as more and more jurisdictions pass uh, legislation... And, and there are many. Is it in the pipe for a lot? Do you see it happening? Yes, well, for sure. We're seeing it, uh, we're seeing it across lots of markets. In, in some of your key markets, Washington, uh, with that St. Gregory, or yeah. New York? Yeah. Well, in New York, you know, we're... we're you know, you're seeing that the number of new, the growth has flattened that, out. Right. That's and so absolutely now you can true. I check that for the, when I hear about, I'm very down on a lot of these companies that have become public. Okay? Right. Airbnb would be one this market doesn't want right now. The growth is flattening. As far right. As it is flattening. It is flattening, which for us is a good sign. Yes. Because, you know, like when you talk about New York, it is 20%, 24%. And there is supply growth. So, you know, for getting even the Airbnb, there's been a lot of growth there. And everyone gets very focused on supply growth, and we all should be. But more importantly, it's the demand and supply growth dynamic that matters. And for the first time in several years, we're going to have 4.8% demand growth in New York with only 4% supply this growth. This is the inflection point. Yes. I think the 8% yield is terrific. I've known you and I've known your business for a very long time. I think it's an anomaly that has to be taken advantage of by people yeah. who watch. That, okay, that's Jay Shaw, CEO of Hershey Hospitality Trust. 8% yield with improving fundamentals and a very big term in Miami. And you just heard about the supply demand in New York City and the laws that are changing that are in your favor out west. Mad Money's back at the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.